So I wanted to make a quick video showing you all kind of my new setup with uh, my little Apache Pelican-ish case because I ended up selling my G85 and my GH4 and I wanted to kind of show you all what I've switched over to because I kind of combined them into one better camera along with getting a different lens than my 30 millimeter f1.4 for the micro four thirds system. So anyways, at the top right, we have the GH5, Panasonic GH5. Like I said, as kind of a conglomeration of both the G85 and then the GH4, taking kind of the best of both of them and then adding a ton more features and just better image quality overall. So that's kind of why I got that for, uh, that and many other reasons as well. So I ended up, I guess downsizing would be the right word um, to, from two to one camera, but this one camera does a whole lot. So uh, definitely no complaints in that department. So the Panasonic GH5, my new main workhorse. So next we have the Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4 here, still the same uh, lens that I had before, still love it. And then over here we have my little a uh, case for all of my different SD cards and micro SD cards. Um, I actually have it facing straight out. It looks like uh, it does stick out a solid inch, but I'm still able to completely shut it, which is kind of a nice feature of this phone up top. So moving on to here, we have the little case. This actually, I believe came with my, yeah, came, came with my KNF concept uh, direct adapter for my EF to micro four thirds. And I just use that as like a little holder for all my miscellaneous tools and some hardware here and there. So I have my little flathead screwdriver. I have a rubber band, which I actually use with my tripod to get really smooth pan shots and get rid of any of that jitter that you might have in your hand, even though my tripod is already pretty smooth. I use that for that. And then also I have this little um, mount for the bottom of my Viltrox. And then we have just various Allen wrenches that can tighten and loosen different things for cages, which I don't currently have set up right now. So that can go back. And go back in there. And then back over here on the left, we have a few different things. We have actually two different things. We have here, like I mentioned, my KNF concept, just my direct straight through adapter without any glass in it that I can attach my uh, Canon lenses two um, so I can attach this young new 51.8 just attach it right on and then uh, it's a 100 millimeter f3.6 equivalent on full frame and so that's what I use that for and like I said this is my young new 51.8 the first actual portrait lens with a fast aperture that I had ever actually purchased so um, it's still very still very very fond of it and uh, still keep it in my bag for some really nice compressed shots with my speed booster which we will get to next so right here we have a couple things it's actually a lot heavier than pretty much any of my other gear we have the Viltrox EF M2 here the uh, micro four thirds to Canon and then right next to it or attached to it rather is not the Sigma 30 millimeter 1.4 that goes for micro four thirds, but this is actually the Sigma 30 1.4 art lens from Sigma that is for Canon mount. It's actually an APS-C lens with a manual focus ring, which is what I really wanted with the Viltrox. So I get a functional, I believe 42 millimeter F1, even though I tend to shoot at F1.2 to F1.4 because the Viltrox does take away a little bit of that sharpness. So I don't like to shoot completely wide open. It gives a really, really beautiful look to the footage, which I'll be sharing uh, some samples of that in videos to come. I also have this little cine gear that I can attach to it. It's not really that necessary, but I just have it to try it out, see if it makes the focus ring any uh, nicer to use. So jury's still out on that. All right, these are step up rings. These top two are used with my 16 and then this bottom attaches to this to fit onto my Sigma. These step up to 77 millimeters to be used with my variable NDs over here, which we'll get to in a second. I actually don't have step up rings for my Yang Nuo. Um, I definitely should add those uh, here to the kit. So that's actually a good reminder. I'm moving over. We have two different kinds of batteries here. The first is just your run of the mill GH4, uh, GH5 batteries. Um, I have, I believe four or five of those. And then I also have here my Sony NPF. This is my monster 8800, I think, milliamp hour battery from Power Extra. And I use that with my Sony NPF uh, plate for, I mean, pretty much all day battery life. Um, I shot three weddings and for each wedding, I used three out of four bars on one of these batteries for the entire day from start to finish, like 11 a.m. to maybe 10 p.m. or uh, 9 p.m. So highly, highly recommend getting an NPF adapter um, if that's something you're into. If you don't mind the extra weight, 
it's a really good option. So those are the Sony NPFs. I'll be kind of building out what my rig is in the future for that, which would be kind of a fun project. Let me know below in the comments if you'd be interested in seeing more of my setup when it comes to like cages and that kind of thing. Okay, I'm talking really fast and a little bit of out of breath. All right, so next thing we have here is the GOBE variable ND filter. This is a little smudgy, but uh, hopefully I can show you what it does. You can see that as you turn it, it makes the image either darker or lighter. And this is just so then I can do the correct shutter speed for the footage that I'm shooting. So here's what it would functionally do. Darken, lighten. That's what those do. Um, very helpful to have if you want to keep your settings quote unquote cinematic while you're shooting. So. There's those two. I have two of those at 77 millimeters. And then this is a new addition to the bag, which is right here, my DJI propeller clamp, which goes around, actually I can show you. It actually goes around these here to clamp down and then you're able to screw on the propellers much, much easier. So that's a really nice tool to have. So I kind of keep that in here. And then I also have the same kind of filter I just showed you, a variable ND from newer as well that raises and lowers the exposure so I can get those cinematic shots with the drone, which again, I'll be showing in the future. All right, so I can go back in there. Alrighty, now we're into audio land. Down here we have the Rode Video Micro, and then you can see next to it is the DDD3 Pro. I'm actually recording this video on the DDD3 Pro. It's up above me now, but I have this just to show you where that would go. So I have the Rode Video Micro in here, not because I use it all the time, but because it's a nice to have a microphone that's passive that runs off of your camera's battery and not its own battery. So let's say my DDD3 Pro dies on me during a shoot, and audio being one of the most important things means that I'd pretty much be screwed unless I had a backup microphone. So this is down here along with the cable and then the uh, mount for it just in case my DD ever runs out of battery. Never had that happen and I don't think it will, but it's at least good to have as a backup. So I have the rocket, whatever you call it. Most people have this. That's just to get dust off of the sensor and lenses um, if need be. As you can see from the previous video, my dividers are different. I actually used Harbor Freight floor mat for this. Just cut it up, put some Velcro in here, measured it all out, and then did uh, adhesive around here. I saw somebody on YouTube doing this project and I really liked that setup. So I ended up trying it because the foam was breaking and it's working for me. So anyways, uh, let me know in the comments what videos you would like to see next and we'll see you all next week.